our general math tutorials. I'm Teacher Neth, and don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and pop the notifications bell. So this time, we will be dealing with rational functions. A rational function is composed of polynomial functions. So I guess it's appropriate to gain understanding first of what a polynomial function is. A polynomial function is formally defined in math books, but be that as it may, a polynomial function may be described as a term or set of terms with non-negative integral exponents. Thus, f of x equals 2x to the fifth plus 1 is a polynomial function since the exponent 5 is a positive integer. Also, f of x equals 1 fifth x squared minus 8x plus 4 is a polynomial function since exponents 2 and 1 are both positive integers. Likewise, h of x equals negative 15 is a polynomial function since negative 15 comes from negative 15 x to the 0, and 0 is a non-negative integer. But f of x equals 3x to the 1 fourth plus 6 is not a polynomial function since 1 fourth is not an integer. And g of x equals x to the negative 4 minus 3 is also not a polynomial function since negative 4, though an integer, is negative. So a rational function may be defined as a function in the form r of x equals p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are both polynomial functions and that q of x should not be equal to 0. For example, r of x equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 all over x plus 1, where x is not equal to negative 1. Is the numerator 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 a polynomial? Yes. How about x plus 1? Is it a polynomial? Yes. Therefore, r of x is a function. So why does the given give a restriction that x should not be equal to negative 1? Because if x is equal to negative 1, then the denominator will become negative 1 plus 1 equals 0, which cannot be. In real life, we use rational functions, though it may go unnoticed. So let's consider these cases. Suppose a family spends 15,000 pesos monthly for food. On the average, it allots an amount f of x of money to each member x of the family. Write an equation which shows the relationship between f of x and x. So in this particular situation, the independent variable is... The dependent variable is member x of the family or the number of family members while the dependent variable is f of x or the amount of money spent for food of each family member. Okay? So note that as the number of family members which is represented by x increases, each member's share or f of x decreases. And as x decreases, then f of x increases. So to visualize it, take a look at this example or at this table. So x, the first row, refers to the, the number of family members, while f of x, the second row, refers to the amount of money spent for food of each family member. As you can see, when there is only one family member, f of x is equal to 15,000 pesos, meaning to say his or her share for, um, for the food is 15,000 pesos. While if there are two members, then 15,000 pesos will be shared by two, and each of them will receive 7,500. While when there are three family members, 15,000 will be shared by three members. Therefore, each of those three will have 5,000 pesos. Same with the cases of 4 and 5 family members. So 15,000 will be divided or will be shared by the number of family members. So for 4, each will receive 3,750 pesos. And for 5 family members, each will have 3,000 pesos. So given that x is the number of family members and f of x is the amount of money spent for food of each family member, then 
the function or the equation that will show the relationship between f of x and x is f of x equals 15,000 all or over x. f of x equals 15,000 over x. This is a rational function, right? Since both the numerator and the denominator are polynomials. A group of earth savers decides to plant fruit-bearing trees. On the average, it takes 30 minutes to plant a tree sapling. Express the rate of work R of W as a function of the amount of work done W in minutes. Okay. In this situation, the independent variable is the amount of work done in minutes, which is represented by W, and the dependent variable is the rate of work or R of W. Note that as the rate of work R of W gets faster, the amount of work done, W, increases. And as the rate slows down, the work done decreases. So to visualize it, let's consider this table. The first row, W, refers to the amount of work done in minutes, while the second row, R of W, refers to the rate of work. Okay. If only one tree sapling, if only one tree sapling is planted, the rate is 1 over 30. But if there if two are planted, that would mean one sapling is planted every 15 minutes on the average. If three are planted, that means one sapling is planted every 10 minutes. And if four are planted, that means two saplings are planted every 15 minutes and if five are planted that means one sapling is planted every six minutes and so on and so forth so given these premises then the relationship between the rate of work and amount of work done is r of w equals w over 30 where r of w is the rate and w is the amount of work done okay so let's uh, consider the case of w equals 2 when two are planted then we assume that r of w or the rate of work is 1 over 15. so let us try to substitute w equals 2 or 2 to w and let us see whether r of w will, will really be equal to 1 over 15. 2 over 30, when simplified, or when divided both by 2, will become 1 over 50. So, it's the same as the value of 1 over 15 in the table. Hope you have realized how rational functions apply in our daily living, and that you're always existing around us. Until next time, 